So the first thing we want to do is just get the three pillars in. And the reason why I say that is that everything starts with that. These are the, these are the foundations that if you do not do these things, if you do not activate these, these three things, you're probably not going to get anywhere near the benefit from whatever practice you're doing as you might if you do implement them. So I've spent 40 years, 40 plus years exploring these things. And I've broken it down into a very concise way of, of setting this stuff up so that people can, can go there and they don't have to retrace all the steps that I do. So let's start with the feet heels together, toes apart. Okay, now this is a, a stance for a lot of young style Tai Chi forms. And it also is the way um, a lot of Xing Yi forms start. So it, uh, you wanna, wanna have this as an option. You wanna be able to do this. I know some people prefer other ways of starting a form and that's perfectly fine, but you want to be able to go in all directions. You wanna be able to feel it in each way. So feel the, so we start, we wanna feel the balls of the feet. And by the ball of the foot, I mean the, I mean this part right here, right on the inside of the foot, the on the the arch there, and where the big knob before you get to the big toe, and so that's the point where you're going to locate that. You feel that. And excuse me if you've heard all this a thousand times before, but we're going to you know, doing this for for people who might just be tuning in and just feel feel the ball of the foot. Now. You want the, the weight to be spread throughout the foot, but that ball is the bullseye. That's where you are directing your attention. You're organizing around that ball. And just notice that as you do that, when you settle your weight so that it's kind of over the ball of the foot a bit more, your heels start to not press down as much into, into the ground. And even though they're, you're still feeling contact with the floor, you're not, uh, you're not locked into the heels. And there's a lot, of, a lot of teachers, very reputable people who say, no, no, you really want to settle into the heels and that's fine, that, that, that's the way you want to do it. I know it's testable to show that you can, if you put on the balls of the feet, you're probably going to be 10 times more rooted. So let's just uh, go there now. So feel that. And notice that just by doing that, you change your energy. Just by feeling into the balls of your feet. Next, you want to establish. So that establishes the earth pole. OK. By doing that, you open the bubbling well points at the at the, the center of the of the of the foot, and you're creating a structure there that allows the the bubbling well to open. The kidney one point at the on the acupuncture chart. Second thing is you want to do is you want to feel the crown of your head. So notice I'm not I'm saying it's not the not the top of your head. You're not feeling from here. It's actually back a little farther. So you're reaching up with the crown of your head. So if you feel where that, you know, that uh, the hair whirl is, that place where the parietal bones meet the occiput, there's a, a, a spot there, a fontanelle that you, is a soft spot in a baby's skull. And that is the place we're organizing around. So reaching up with the fontanelle, the posterior fontanelle. And when we do that, the chin comes in. So you open that jade pillow gate, which is at the base of the skull. And you feel the, 
balls of the feet, you feel reach with the crown of the head. The knees are unlocked. So you're allowing your body to settle down, sink into the earth. And relax your lower back so that your coccyx drops. You're reaching down with the coccyx, your tailbone. And there's a point there, an acupuncture point, on the, or an energy point called the Wei Lu. And you want to establish a separation, a poles in opposition between the Wei Lu and the crown of your head. So what that does is it lengthens the spine and opens the jade pillow gate. Opening the jade pillow gate allows for the energy to move up the spine into your head a lot more freely. It has a lot of, a lot of powerful effects, which we're not going to get into right now. We've covered that in earlier sessions, but you can feel it right now as you do that. So you feel the balls of the feet, knees are unlocked, reach with the crown, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back, allow your Wei Lu to drop. And you're feeling the spine lengthening. You're opening up. Jonathan and I were having a conversation today and you know, talking about how many people as they get older, they shrink. And I was pointing out that, that I've actually gotten taller. I'm much, I'm much taller now than I was in my 30s. And it's a direct result, I believe, from doing this work. That if you consciously lengthen your spine, you consciously create that opening between the vertebrae that you actually get measurably taller. For me, it's like, it's over an inch taller. So at 70, I'm taller than I was at 35. And I'm planning on keeping that going. The important thing here is to remember that regardless of whether you get taller or not, if you do this, you get more chi, more energy. So we're establishing our central equilibrium here. And it's something that's easy to forget as you go about your day. But I encourage you to explore it a thousand times a day if you can. Just remember to get tall, reach with your crown. If you do that, good things happen. Reach with, reach with your elbows, round your arms a little bit here. Point and reach with your index fingers. And feel the chi in your hands as you do that. Keep rechecking that you're feeling your weight over the balls of your feet. You want to feel that central equilibrium. Now, one thing you may notice right now is if you're getting it correctly, getting it correct, there's a, uh, a sense of you're kind of floating. It feels weird. It feels not very stable. It feels like you're just kind of a, um, like a, um, a balloon floating in the air. And it's paradoxical because this is where you're at your most powerful, but it's the least substantial. So we have this, this substantial, insubstantial paradox going on here. And so learning to trust the insubstantiality is a huge part of this. And it has carryover into all aspects of your life. Learning to be able to go to this insubstantial place is, has 
dramatic effects in everything else you do. Because the, we have these primitive instincts to go and to want us to seek contraction as a way of protecting ourselves. And this is the opposite of that. It says, no, no, we're opening up. We're reaching. We're creating a system and a structure that allows us to access more, more life, more energy, more vitality, more health, more possibilities, more ability. We want to now just feel the qua, the hip joints, and want to open that just, just relax and sink, turn so that you allow yourself to sink down and, and release the qua. So this creates a, an opening there, which allows you to, the energy to flow north and south much more uh, efficiently. You're then able to ground the yang chi that's rattling around in your head. It allows it to go out through your feet and into the earth. It allows the yin chi, the yin supportive nurturing chi of the earth to rise and fill. And go out the top of your head. Do that, you become part of the big system. We're going to take this and we're going to now go to a different, slightly different. So you pick up your left foot, rotate, put your foot down. So this point is pointing straight forward. And then you feel the ball set the knee spiral down and you pivot on your right foot so that now both feet are parallel hip width. So this is another way to start a martial arts, an internal martial arts form. You'll see this in some forms of Tai Chi. You also see it in, in Bagua Zhang. Bhagavad we start with the feet parallel. So, but we want to find that central equilibrium here as well. Even though Bhagavad doesn't have the same emphasis on rooting that Taiji does or Shingi, it still demands central equilibrium. Even though the postures in Bhagwa are quite um, extravagant. They, you still are looking for central equilibrium in each of those postures. So here again, we feel the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Relax the back, drop the way Lu. Feel the separation, feel the poles in opposition between the Wei Lu and the crown. Elbows up, fingers reaching, boom, boom. You're relaxing into your claw. And feel that as a starting point. We're exploring the center of equilibrium here. So these are all static postures. And we're going to do some more static postures. But I want you to feel that. Now you're going to feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and pivot on your left heel. Turn your foot out so it's on a 45. And I want you to just feel the center of equilibrium in this. So even though this is a transitional posture, we're going to be taking a step forward into a bow stance, but at no point do we want to not be in central equilibrium. 
Feel this, feel the, feel the chi. Why would you want to miss any moment of this? Now feel the ball of the left foot. Push your left knee out, set it over the ball of the foot. And just feel into that. Feel into the central equilibrium of this posture. Even though it's a transitional posture, we want to be in central equilibrium as we do this. Because there's really no place in a Tai Chi form where you should not be rooted, connected, feeling a whole body energetic connection. Every posture should be a, have the potential for either de defensive or offensive expression. Whether or not you ever use it for such, knowing that as having that that readiness there allows you to experience energies that you would not ordinarily. Now feel the ball of that left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up into the left quad. You're releasing down. Central equilibrium again. You're reaching with the crown, you're reaching with the elbows, reaching with the fingers. Everything is reaching, we're expanding, we're opening. Pick up that left, the right heel. And just feel into that posture, feel the readiness of that posture and step forward, heel first, place the foot down. So the foot is, it's ready to go. It's in this position, but there's only about 10% of your weight there. Most of the substantiality is still in your left leg. And you're feeling into the central equilibrium there. Now feel the ball of the right foot. So you're establishing a connection there. First, it's consciousness. You're consciously establishing connection. That leads to chi. The chi follows that. Push your right knee forward until you feel it lined up in that sweet spot with your right leg. And do it without shifting your weight into that right leg. So you're pushing the knee forward but you're not loading up the right leg yet. Your, le your left leg, your back leg is still the substantial leg. You just feel that. So now we're going to very slowly feel the ball that right, set the right knee and you're going to spiral down into the right leg, into the right claw. We're starting to very slowly load that up. So at no point do you leave central equilibrium as you're doing that. Very slowly do that and you line up your body. So then I have the right leg has now become substantial. but we're not done yet. We're still maintaining that center of equilibrium. And we're gonna turn the waist. Use your yao, your lower lumbar area, your sacrum, your lower back really, and just use that to very slowly turn so that now you're square up. Your weight's about 70, 75% in that right leg. Now 
30 in the back. And you're finding your center of equilibrium in this. You're releasing down into the quality, allowing that to settle down in, feeling the ball of the right foot. And by slowing this down like this, it enables you to see where you've gotten into habits, habits of movement, habits of standing, that keep you out of center equilibrium. Notice that also that the amount of, of energy that's flowing through your system now is quite substantial. And it requires a certain degree of practice to be able to tolerate this much energy. But that's the fun of it. Now we're going to go to the back foot. We're going to feel the ball of the, the left foot. Feel this, feel that. We're starting to create that as a substantiality. And feel that connection. We set the left knee. Notice that my body didn't move much at all to set the left knee. It's really just a decision. It's the decision to say, empty out front leg, start to load up back leg. Now very slowly start to spiral down to the right, releasing the left quad. So you're loading up the left leg, you're spiraling down to the right. You're loading that up so that your left leg now has about 70% of the, of the load. Feel your center of equilibrium there, reach of the crown, reach of the elbows, reach of the fingers. And turn back to center. And feel your center of equilibrium now. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. You're loading up that left quad now, your left leg. Feel the center of equilibrium in this posture. You're loading that up. Pick up your right heel and step back with your right foot. Place the foot down, turn the foot out so it's on the 45. You're still loaded up in the front leg, the left leg. Feel the center equilibrium here. Now feel the ball of the right foot, beginning the process of creating substantiality in the right leg. You set the right knee. Unlocked, but you're setting it. You're saying, okay, right knee, right knee, you're not moving. And release the right cross spiraling down to the left. So you're starting to load up even more into that right quad, that right leg. Feel that. Now we're going into a single weighted stance here. About 95% of your weight is in that right leg now. Your left foot, you wanna be able to sink down so that you can pick up the left foot, put it down, pick it up, put it down, be able to really trust your right, your right leg to support you. Feel your center of equilibrium now. We're in a single weighted stance. You're standing with the right leg it is your substantial leg. Feel into that. A 
you know, the central equilibrium. Now I want you to deliberately go out of central equilibrium and just feel what that, that feels like. Just kind of push your butt a little bit out to the right. So you're feeling that jutting butt syndrome and just notice what happens whenever you do that. Notice the tension that is created in your body whenever you just push the, the hip out horizontally, even just a little bit. And do yourself a favor and return back. So you're feeling the substantia, the weight settling over the ball of your right foot. And notice how a lot of that just disappeared. Step back with your left foot, place it on the 45. Feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee. And you're lining up that left foot. Reach with the crown, reach with the elbows, reach with the fingers. Relax your way, Lou, and spiral down to the left. Keeping your center equilibrium as you do that. Pick up your right heel. Place, come on the toe of your right foot. You feel your center equilibrium in this posture. Feel the ball set the knee of your left leg. And step around so your right foot comes in front and turns out on a 45. Feel the ball of the right foot now. Set the right knee. Spiral down to the right. And if you do, you're loading up the right quad, re releasing the left so that now you are settling down into your right leg. And this is a very um, gentle dragon posture. You spiral down like this. You have a this is a, a dragon posture in Xing Yi. So having that, so the left knee comes right inside the, the right knee. The weight is about 90% in the, in the right leg. Your left heel is up and you're maintaining central equilibrium in your in your body as you do this. Step forward with the left foot, turn the foot out, do the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left and sink so that you're maintaining central equilibrium. You have a dragon posture in the left leg now. So all this is, is we're, getting, we're getting a little more exotic here, but it's primarily to, to demonstrate how we can find central equilibrium in all kinds of different places. Step up and go back to a neutral posture. Let's say Shoulder width.
and just feel into that. Empty out of all muscular tension and just allow the form, the structure to conduct the energy in as efficient a way as it possibly can. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So I'm gonna load up, feel the center of equilibrium in the right leg now. Step in with the left foot. And feel your center of equilibrium in this very neutral posture here. Take a deep breath. Inhale. And as you exhale, disappear the chi. Throw it all away and dissolve into the emptiness. Allow yourself to dissolve the body, dissolve the energy and shift into a even more substantial state and energy. 